Hello everyone, my name is Kieran um, and I used to work for the Field Studies Council but I now work for the Biological Recording Company so that's why both those logos are on there but today I'm going to be talking about a project that I delivered while at the Field Studies Council um, which had a dragonfly aspect to it. So um, the format of today's talk, I'm going to give a little bit of background to the Field Studies Council's BioLinks project. And then I'm going to present some of our analysis of the project's training programme, which goes beyond dragonflies and includes lots of different invertebrate groups. And then I'm going to hone in a little bit on the dragonfly stuff that we learned and pass on uh, those lessons that we learned. Um, so a little bit of acknowledgement, first of all, there were, there were more people than this involved in the project, but um, these were the four people really that were involved in the dragonfly aspect. Um, so there's myself, who was the uh, project development officer and then project manager for the project. Uh, Dr. Charlie Bell, who I believe we'll be hearing from next, who is now at the National Trust, but she was originally the West Midlands project officer. She um, ran some dragonfly courses with Sue Reese Evans, but uh, Charlie was also instrumental in putting together the dragonfly training pathway, ID training pathway that I'll mention in a minute. And then... Charlie left the project partway through. We had a bit of staff turnover because of COVID with people leaving and new people joining and changes in roles. And for the final year, Gino Brignoli, who wrote a lot of this presentation, uh, that certainly the first half, uh, delivered our dragonfly and damselfly courses with our uh, ordinary specialists in the Southeast. And Rachel Davis uh, did the same in the West Midlands region of the project. So just a big thank you to all of them because even though I'm presenting this information, it's really being gathered by, by them. So I want to go back in time to 2016, 2017, uh, to start with, which seems like an age now, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it's been through a lot since then. We've left the EU and we've been through a pandemic. So yeah, none of that was predicted when we started. So um we did a consultation period of about 10 months to figure out what we were going to do. So the original concept of BioLinks was to improve the identification skills of the biological recording community in the West Midlands and the Southeast for difficult to identify and under-recorded groups. So that was the, the remit when I, when I started consulting with the biological recording sector about what we were going to do. So we did a host of different consultation methods, including getting people to workshops and trying to uh, figure out what they wanted or what they thought should happen. We consulted with stakeholders, which did include by, uh, the British Dragonfly Society. And we ran an online survey, which had um, quite a healthy 369 online survey responses. We also spoke to site managers about what would be useful for them. Um, that's actually one of the reasons why Dragonflies ended up being um, included, and I'll come to that in a second. So one of the questions in our online survey was, would you consider taking part in training to learn how to record the following groups? And we included groups that didn't really meet the remit for the Bionics project, just to kind of get an overall view of what people thought with regards to different groups. And really interesting, what you'll see is the groups that are under-recorded and more difficult to identify, there was actually a higher demand for those courses. And the reason for that is because there was a fair proportion of uh, respondents, sometimes over 20%, that perhaps didn't feel there was a need for them to train on those groups because they already had reasonable ID skills. Uh, what you may notice is when we look at the invertebrate groups, dragonflies actually scored really low in terms of need. Um, I think they were only behind uh, butterflies, if I remember rightly. Uh, yeah, about even with moths, maybe a little bit less. So they were one of the lowest priority in terms of training need, according to the respondents, uh, for uh, out of the invertebrate groups. Um, we also asked, which of the following groups do you believe should be prioritised for the by the BioLinks project? And again, dragonflies and damselflies scored relatively low. So when we got to this point, uh, I decided that it made most sense in terms of budget, etc., if we group together some focus species groups that use the same equipment and 
had similar uh, challenges, et cetera. So we decided to focus on invertebrates. But when we spoke to site managers and local environmental record centers, we decided even though dragonflies and damselflies had scored relatively low compared to other invertebrate groups in the need for more training and inclusion, because we were being told that those that use dragonfly data for for looking after sites or for regional data sets had a decent amount of dragonfly and damselfly data, but not quite enough to make the same kind of evidence-based decisions that they could make for butterflies or uh, vertebrates. So we thought it was one where we could maybe evidence a bit of impact because we could tip it just over the edge so that we had uh, stronger recording communities for that group. So that's why they were kind of folded in. And we also use them a little bit as uh, an entry level group because uh, we can run field course, field ID courses on them, etc. So the way the bilings worked, uh, it became very evident in the consultation that what was lacking in the sector was any kind of structured training program. And there was a lot of use of uh, levels by training providers like Field Studies Council, who I work for, but others as well, talking about introductory or beginner or intermediate advanced, but these were never really clearly defined. So we put together a volunteer um, learning pathway that described each of these different seven levels uh, in terms of knowledge, skills, confidence, and motivation um, to try and really kind of hammer out what each level meant. And that, that is all available in the BioLinks um, reports and guidance documents that are all available through Applied Ecology Resources. And I'll just drop a link in the chat now where you can access all of that. So for each of our focus species groups, and we had quite a few, probably too many, um, we came up with a ID training pathway. So a series of one day courses that could be combined into residential courses that would go through the different um, skills uh, that people would need in order to be able to train a group, uh, tr train on ID and recording of a group. So we divided, we basically divided the types of course by the levels. So we had our introductory courses, which were our learn to love courses, uh, and they essentially covered biology and ecology. So you didn't need any background. They didn't shy away from covering fairly complex topics but you didn't need any ID skills or any background in dragonflies or damselflies to be able to sit that course. You just needed a general interest in natural history. Um, and we would talk through where dragonflies and damselflies fitted within the wider context of British wildlife. And we'd, we'd highlight some of the key ecological, behavioral, biological features that um, are associated with the group. So each learn to love course for each different focus species group would be quite different depending on what that group was important for. Uh, with, we then went on to field identification of the adult dragonflies and damselflies, and we decided to split this into two one day courses. So we had a damselfly ID field ID course and a dragonfly field ID course. Uh, and then at the intermediate level, we had our dragonfly and damselfly larva and exuvia ID course with microscopes. So this was essentially going through a specimen collection and ex of exuvia and larvae using the ID guides. Um, in addition to our formal training courses, we also had volunteer days where people could learn informally. So we had ordinata field recorder days where we'd go to a site and we'd record the dragonflies on site. We'd have an expert uh, an expert, ordinator expert there that would give guidance and lead uh, the recording activities, but it would be very informal. People would be learning from each other and from the specialists. There would be no formal talk content. And then we had our Dragonfly and Damselfly Volunteer ID days where we'd provide specimens in a lab and people would practice. They'd be encouraged to bring in their own specimens if they had them as well. Um, and if we collected specimens on an ordinary field recorder day, we might then go through and ID them on one of the volunteer ID days. So that was what the project looked like. The project ran for five years. I'm not going to go into any detail about it, but we had COVID in the middle. So there was a big break in the project, which, which had a fairly big impact, although we did manage to deliver all the events that we said we would. Um, 
the program had 51 expert or specialist tutors. We delivered over 490 events and courses, uh, which amounted to 477 learner days because uh, we had our residential courses, which were multi-day as well. We did this across 47 venues across the Southeast and the West Midlands, which included six FSC centres. Uh, during the project, we submitted over 10,000 records on iRecord. Uh, but the really impressive figure, I think, more than anything, is that we educated nearly 6,000 learners. So a huge number of people went through the programme. Some went all the way through the programme, some just a bit, some attended one course, some attended all the introductory courses, other, others focused on a specific focus species group. Um, and this is just to give you an idea of the geographic spread of the locations that we delivered training. So you'll see there's real focuses around our Bishop's Wood Centre in Worcestershire, Preston Montford Centre in uh, Shropshire and uh, in London as well. OK, so if we break down those 490 events, um, our introductory events, our Learn to Love courses, we had 67. Uh, we did 133 field ID courses, 108 microscope based courses and 40 residential courses, uh, as well as 44 field recorder days as well. So bear in mind that this is across all the different taxa, so it's not just dragonflies. Uh, we also ran 13 conferences and they included national biological recording conferences, but also some regional ones. And we did 129 of our informal uh, workshops many of which didn't focus on a species group, but some of which did focus specifically on dragonflies. So a lot of training courses and events. Uh, in terms of our learners, this is how they break up by the different uh, events. You'll see uh, microscope courses, 882, nearly 2,000 learners across our field ID courses. So yeah, again, really proud of the engagement numbers. Um, it wasn't just dragonflies, so dragonflies accounted for about 5% of the courses. Um, people who know me will know that I'm the national recorder for earthworms, so that is kind of why they scored so high on there compared to some of the other groups, because it meant I could deliver stuff in-house. Uh, we did a lot of beetle stuff uh, as well, but yeah, quite a wide range. Something I would do differently if I went back in time, I would do less species and do them more intense, intensely, I think, intensively. Uh, so that's a lesson, a general lesson that I learned. So we are biological recorders that were running the project through and through. So all of the team, as well as working on the project, were passionate about biological recording in their spare time. And as I'm speaking to biological recorders today, you probably won't be surprised that a project team comprised of biological recorders were obsessed with gathering data. So we gathered absolutely loads of data about everything that we did. And for every single course that we taught, we almost didn't let people leave until they filled in a paper form telling us uh, how much they'd enjoyed out of five, how useful they'd found a course out of five. Uh, and they had to score themselves at the beginning of the course, what level they felt they were at from those seven levels. And then at the end of the course, they had to rescore where they felt they were. Uh, and we encourage people to not necessarily increase their level if they didn't feel like they'd went up a whole level from a one day course. So we compiled all of that data and we Gino did some uh, analysis on it. And these are the learner metrics by taxon for the, the top scoring groups. So first up there, we can see our progression metric. And what we found was that people on average with the top groups felt like they were uh, increasing by a score of about one level per, per group. Um, this isn't surprising for something like earthworms because there is no field ID. So there's only microscope ID and the learn to love course. So you tend to find that people feel like they get more out of a microscope course and they develop more skills because they're often doing something that's quite, quite new to them. Um, in terms of the enjoyment, which is the second uh, second segment of uh, groups there, dragonflies and damselflies scored really high. Uh, people really enjoyed going out. 
that's partly because it's not hard to go out and find dragonflies and damselflies if you're doing it at a site where you've got ponds um, and fresh water. When we went out looking for longhorn beetles on a very, very dry day, we didn't find any. That's going to bring that score down. But yeah, dragonflies and damselflies were the second most uh, popular after false scorpions false scorpions or pseudoscorpions. And again, they scored really highly in terms of usefulness, uh, in in terms of useful, yeah, the usefulness score. If we look at the lower end, it may not surprise you to see that some of the groups which we would say are traditionally maybe harder, like flies, bees can be very difficult, uh, snails can be tricky, wasps, spiders, were scoring lower across, across the board. Uh, but you can see there that the usefulness and enjoyment scores, there's not a lot in it. The progression scores, we're seeing a bit more of a difference, but the usefulness and enjoyment, it didn't really matter what species group it was. So uh, our introductory courses, we use mainly as engagement and recruitment for the project. They didn't focus on ID. There was no specimen collecting so that anybody who would be offended by that wouldn't be put off going on the course. And we didn't pitch microscopes. So even though we had access to microscopes, we would not include the use of them in these courses at all. And people found them very enjoyable um, and a nice stepping stone into the project. The field ID was exactly that. We focused purely on field ID. We'd start off in the classroom, then go outside, and we'd focus on the use of field equipment and field ID guides. Again, no microscopes. But we would have a real emphasis on recording. We would always make sure that every course taught people how to submit their records. We opted for iRecord where the recording scheme encouraged it. So for all of our Dragonfly courses, we were pushing people to put it in uh, to iRecord and guiding them towards using the BDS Dragonfly form. Then we had our microscope ID courses, uh, more advanced techniques using microscopes, very short segment of taught um, classroom style presentation on this. Most of it would be working through specimens with the ID guys. And then our residentials were an option for people that couldn't do the one day courses, which were often during the week. Our residentials were at weekend. Uh, they had a more intensive structure and they would basically combine the rest of the program into uh, a three day re intensive residential course. What we found was they built stronger connections with the training hub and they had bet they were better for creating social bonds between the participants as well. So course feedback, uh, there wasn't a lot in it, but what we did find is that the usefulness of the microscope courses scored significantly higher than field ID and introductory courses. And the residential courses, which also included microscope work, scored better across, highest across the board uh, and significant difference there with progression and significantly higher for usefulness. So residentials should be a core part of uh, invertebrate training courses going forward. So uh, we also asked people if they'd submit records based on the responses from our end of project survey. We reckon the project was responsible for about 35,000 records. So again, really proud of that. Right. I'm aware of time, so I'm going to try and speed up a bit. Some initial conclusions were everybody loves pseudoscorpions. Enjoyment and usefulness was high. Progression was highest in taxonomic groups that had few species, so under 60, and lacked concise literature. Residential courses scored highest across the board, particularly with progression. Um, learners were prepared to travel from outside expected catchments for the residentials. So we were getting people that were only coming to the residentials and coming from the wider um, UK outside of the regions we were operating within. Uh, and we didn't get as many records as we'd hoped but a small number of dedicated recorders did contribute a relatively large number of records. So what does this mean for Dragonflies, right? Back to the training program. This is what we said we would deliver, but we did play around with it a little bit. Um, our Learn to Love courses, for specifically for Dragonflies, uh, they scored quite well. Uh, an average level change of nearly one for um, a Learn to Love course was quite high. Um, and they every the average was five out of five. So for enjoyment, so really well received and uh, really high usefulness score as well. And I would like to say a lot of our courses were delivered by Sue Ree Sevens, and she can take a lot of credit for these scores because 
she scored so well as a tutor. So my advice is try and get Sue to do your training because she's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> um, so our field ID training days, again, generally scores are quite good. But I just want to show you something that I found quite interesting when I, I delve further into uh, the different field ID courses. So we had a field ID of damselflies course, a field ID of dragonflies course, and then we also tried doing dragonflies and damselflies together all one day. The score for damselflies was the highest. So we had an average level change of 1.07. So that means that people were saying on average that they were yeah, one or more level change, which which for a field ID course is quite high. And I think what's interesting is that damselflies are generally the group within Ordinata that people find the most difficult if we compare them to dragonflies. So there's a real need maybe to separate these out and focus on them on a one day course. Uh, dragon field idea of dragonflies still a good score, but noticeably lower than damselflies. And I think this is probably because they're bigger, distinctive species, so they're easier to ID. So people maybe didn't feel like their skills were being as de developed as further. So um, there's more need for damselfly courses because people need more help with them. But what's really interesting is the score for field idea of dragonflies and damselflies was significantly lower. And my personal, uh, well, the, the feedback from the students was that it was too much information for one day. So I know this is quite a traditional method of training for Dragonfly ID to do it all in one day. But with that many species, you can spread that, you can separate them out. And people actually found that they didn't progress as well when everything was included. If we look at the microscope courses, uh, again, uh, we had two different courses, one that looked at larvae and exuvia and one that looked at uh, just larvae. Now, these were taught by different tutors and taught in, uh, in different ways as well. So that will affect the scores. But uh, the top one scored 1.07 and good score for progression, whereas the other one scored 0.5. Now, the difference was that this course, which we only run once, so it's not it's not an average that, it's only a one-off, it involved using two different ID resources. And the students reported in their feedback that it was too difficult getting to groups, grips with two books at the same time. So my advice going forward for this would be, if we want to train people to use multiple ID guides, we should try and focus courses specific courses on an id guide so if we want to teach people to use two lav larval id guides that would be two separate courses two one day course or combine them together and focus on one guide on day one and one guide on day two but don't try and introduce them together because people found it really difficult so um conclusions with regards to the odonata training was that, again, the average enjoyment and usefulness scores were, were high, regardless of the course level. So even where people were reporting lower progression, they were still enjoying themselves. Um, progression was impacted by course structure. So every course is not equal and the same. And we do need to think about the needs of our students rather than perhaps how we've always traditionally done things. What is it that helps our students get the most out of that one day course? And what are the learning objectives for that course? Is it to teach them everything we can about dragonflies in a day? Or is it to try and get them more confident using a specific ID guide? Or is it to get them confident with even just one or two species at the end of the day? So not kind of overestimating what we can do within a day. Uh, on that note, one day is not enough time to teach field ID of Odonata. The more we can break these, uh, this group up, I think, the better. Uh, and learners show that they benefited from separate damsel and dragonfly one day courses. So if you're wanting to confidently teach people to identify order, uh, I'd say in the field, I'd say that's a two day course uh, or two separate one day. Um, and a one day larval microscope course should focus on the use of a single ID resource. If you're wanting to introduce multiple ID resources, this should be multiple days or courses. 
I've got a few personal recommendations as well that I didn't want to speak for the FSC, <laughs> uh, just in case uh, they've got a different idea. Um, but I think consideration should be given to splitting Damselfly and Dragonfly for microscope courses. So I think we'd probably see something similar about an improvement with the progression if we split them out. Because at the end of the end of the day, during an ID course, people are working through a reference collection. So we can quite easily uh, have just a damselfly reference collection or ju just a dragonfly reference collection because nobody's going to get through all of the British species of damselfly in a day anyway. So I, I think there's real potential for that. Um, I think we need sector-wide agreement on a structured training pathway because I think this would result in inc increased recorder skill levels. I think it will increase the number of records that are submitted. Um, and I'd like to see BDS leading that, and I'd love to work with them on that. Um, and online training is becoming more and more important, and both webinars and online courses should be incorporated into the structured training pathway for dragonflies. So if we're talking about in-person courses and events, this is what I personally think, as a minimum, the ordinary ID training pathway should look like. I think we should be separating out damselflies and dragonflies. and. I think we've got five days worth of training there. And I do think those informal opportunities to learn are really important as well. I think we could add in courses to this about surveying dragonflies for specific projects uh, and pre specific surveys. And I think we could add in non-ID courses about conservation and ecology uh, as well. And then I just wanted to end on a note about, about the future in online training. Uh, I'm really pleased to state that I'm working, the Biological Recording Company and myself are working with the British Dragonfly Society on an online training course. Uh, we haven't started on this yet, it's still very early stages, but um, we'll be looking to do that when I've got a bit more time, uh, off, probably in the off season uh, this winter. I've also heard on the grapevine that the Field Studies Council are developing uh, Dragonfly courses. I'm not personally quite sure what stage they're at, but um, my ex-colleague Rachel has told me that she's written content for their courses before. So there are a couple of online courses potentially in the pipeline there. Um, in terms of webinars, uh, we did a Dragonfly Ento Live webinar. So Ento Live webinars focus on uh, research. That was with the wonderful Ellie, who we've heard and seen today. Uh, I'm just dropping a link to the blog for that, where you can watch back the webinar. Um, and see the Q&A and any useful links from that. But if anybody is wanting to um, do a Dragonfly-based Ento Live webinar, which would focus on a research output such as a scientific paper, data set, et cetera, then please do get in touch. I'm just going to drop my email address in the chat there. And I'm also looking to launch over the next year uh, training webinars under the banner of Ento Learn, which will focus on... Uh, subjects within an entomological or invertebrate subject. So I've got earthworms of the UK and longhorns of the UK part one and part two uh, ready to go. Uh, they're open for bookings and I'll drop the link to where you can book them. But I am considering doing some dragonfly ones. So if we've got any dragonfly specialists here that would like to do some webinars, I do pay my uh, tutors as well, uh, then please get in touch.